Hello, and welcome to the latest in our environmental policy video series. In each of these collections of bite-sized videos, we'll be bringing environmental science insights into the world of policy in 10 minutes or less. Over the course of this series, we'll be confronting a profound reality. The decisions we make now will be historic ones, and they will decide the stories we tell to generations to come about the fight against climate change. Our video series on climate action and transformative change will revisit the institution's work ahead of the COP26 Climate Summit, delving into the details of our manifesto for transformative change and the 54 recommendations it sets out for global climate action, as well as the analysis and evidence to support them. As the series goes on, we will learn more about the ways in which climate change has been caused by complex interactions between social, economic and natural systems. We'll also learn how we can employ systems thinking approaches to achieve multiple benefits for the environment, society and the economy. In this video, we'll be discussing climate leadership and the actions that world leaders can take to ensure that climate action is effective and aligns with scientific insights. When faced with problems, we instinctively look for small, slow, simple changes which we can make. But climate change is tied into our economy and society in profound ways. So we need to act more quickly than that. And we need to ensure that the changes we make influence the system as a whole and don't just move around some deck chairs on the Titanic when it's about to crash into an iceberg. Our leaders need to think beyond individual solutions to isolated issues. They should consider other natural systems which might be affected by the choices that they are making. We should reflect on how our actions as a society are placing pressure on the natural world so that we can avoid creating more problems when we implement policies which are meant to solve the situation. Thinking about systems like this doesn't just avoid unintended consequences, it can also open the doorway to benefits we might not have considered. When we talk about co-benefits, we're considering the ways that a solution to one problem can create opportunities, not just to improve the environment, but potentially for human lives and livelihoods as well. If we look at problems in terms of the ways they are linked, we can quickly see that co-benefits arise in everything we do. When we reconsider how we use land, either to build or to grow, we're also affecting our future food security, our ability to give people healthy diets, the way that land could have protected us against extreme events like flooding, and our capacity to regulate our climate. And if our decision could affect all those things that we care about so much, it's just common sense that we consider them when we make that decision. Sometimes we can't have everything. As we work to address these complex environmental challenges, we may need to make trade-offs between different goals. When those difficult choices are presented to us, environmental science can show us what different options will mean for the future and help us to prepare for the risks that come with the choices we make. If we're going to use that information wisely, we need to ensure that the relationship between science and society remains strong. Listening to videos like this one helps to inform your actions, but we need the people making big decisions about our future to be listening to scientists as well, or they'll make those decisions without access to the best information about the choices they make and what it might mean for the people they represent. When we make decisions, when we design solutions and when we implement them, we need science to be part of the process. Insights from different disciplines of science can give us different perspectives and including as wide a range as possible will help make decisions better, avoiding risks down the line. If that's going to work, people need more power to make their voices heard. Our approach should be co-produced, which means making decisions alongside those who will be affected by them. If we want to create a sustainable future, it needs to be produced by leaders, science and communities working together. Ultimately, as we try to respond to climate change, we need to recognise that it is profoundly linked to other problems, like the crisis facing our planet's biodiversity and many of the other natural and social challenges which are tied to the way our society functions every day. Global leaders will represent us as we face those fundamental challenges. When they do, they should ensure that they are considering the ways that systems interact, looking for as many co-benefits as they can, working with science and communities to identify solutions, and creating change that will transform our society for the good of nature and humanity. But if these issues are linked to our economy, how can it change for the better? What should businesses in the financial sector do to support climate action? How can the ways we define sustainability mobilise finance? 
and how can governments and consumers support green finance? We'll be answering those questions and more as we continue with this IES policy series on climate action and transformative change. But if you want to get an inside track on the answers, you can read all about it in our landmark Manifesto for Transformative Change, which is available on the IES website. If you want to support our work on science-led climate action, you can become an affiliate, or if you're a professional in the environmental sector working with science, consider becoming a member of the IES. You'll find a link to our Manifesto for Transformative Change in the details below, along with our social media and a link to the IES website. Make sure you follow us across platforms so that you're up to date with all of our latest events, videos and CPD opportunities. And remember to like the video, share it with friends and colleagues, and let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. Join us again for another short video in our policy series on climate action and transformative change. But for now, thank you for watching and we'll see you soon.